Hi, I'm back again. It's Gail from Bernina of Naperville with class three from our embroidered crazy quilt. So did you enjoy the stitch and flip technique? It was easy. No points, no anything, just sew and look at color. I love it. So today, after we've done the um, stitch and flip, we want to actually embellish these pieces. So step one, I'm going to show you how to thread up the Bernina L890 and do a chain stitch and we're going to work upside down. So you're going to love it. And then if you don't have a serger like that or a cover stitch or whatever, we're going to do some bobbin work. That's right. You're going to put that fancy thread down in your bobbin. If you have a 790 or a 5 series or a 4 series or whatever the case is, you're going to need to whip out that red bobbin case. But if you don't have one of those and you have an 880 plus, you don't need a bobbin case. We're going to monkey with the bobbin tension. So as you can see, there's a lot to do, so let's get started. Now that we've gotten all of our areas covered for our foundation, it's time to square it up. So I do that by turning it over, and there you can see why I wanted my dark lines to show up, because they're very bold, and I'll be able to see them as we work upside down on this. So I'm just gonna trim, and sometimes I just leave about an eighth of an inch larger than my piece of material. It's just, you know, there is a little bit of shrinkage on this. I cut these to 12 and a half, but I can tell you they're gonna shrink down a little bit because we're gonna do a lot of quilting on these. I've threaded my Bernina L890 up for a two thread chain stitch. Now this technique you can also do on the Burnett 42 or the Burnett 48, both of which we have in stock. But um, this one is my preferred go-to machine because it's gonna tell me everything to do in order to get set up for my chain stitching. All right, when we get ready for threading our L890 for this chain stitch, and this is what we're gonna use to do our decorative stitching on our crazy quilt, you're gonna need this Wonderfill Razzle Thread in black. This is what we use here at Bernina of Naperville, and I love this thread, it's really cool. It's also gonna be able to go on our bobbin when we do couching. So if you don't have a cover stitch or a chain stitch machine, you'll still be able to do some really cool things if you put this stuff in the bobbin. In my needle is just a Cerakore thread. This is what we use for our regular serger thread. It's made by Mettler and it is a um, polyester thread, nothing special. So let's have a look at the finished product here. Now here is our chain stitch. So the chain stitch, I have adjusted the length from the default setting on the machine. So our length is about 4.5 millimeters and nothing else has really changed. So this is a pretty easy technique if you wanna kind of delve in, get that um, L890 humming. When we thread up our machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you bring out your wire. The um, razzle thread is just a little bit too thick to go through the air threading mechanisms on the L890, so I actually just feed it through manually. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's get ready for threading, and I'm going to open up the guided access on the Bernina L890. We're gonna start out by choosing the two thread chain stitch. Then the machine is gonna tell us to do a few things. First, it wants us to lift the presser foot, which I just did. Then it wants us to um, unthread, which I just did. Then it wants us to put on presser foot C13. Now, when you're using this machine, there's another foot that you would use normally for your overlocking and stuff, but for this application, we're gonna use C13, and that indeed is on the machine. And if you're ever confused as to how you wanna put a foot on the machine, there's a little video next to it each time. 
you have to do something. Um, I want my presser foot pressure at four, which it is. And if you want to know what that is, well, there's a little lever at the top of the machine that allows how hard the presser foot presses down on the material. And then I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I want to put the right center needle in my machine. And I'm going to show you how to do this. That right center needle is actually the... Um, third needle from the right and the third needle from the left because there's two sets of needles on this machine. There's a back set for your overlocking mode and there's a front set for the cover stitching. Then like all Bernina converting sergers, we need to um, lower our knife and we're going to do that and we're, and we're going to adjust our cutting width so that everything fits nicely into place. And then we have to attach our cover stitch insert. So this cover stitch insert is like, it's got um, seam guides on it and it's just meant to cover up all of that area because we are not using a knife protector because there's no knife used in a chain stitch. Then we're going to deactivate the upper looper and that's also pretty easy. You just flip a switch, press your foot control and the lower looper sits itself down. And then we don't need to do anything with upper looper thread converter. And we want our rolled hem stitch selector on zero. And then finally, we're gonna be threading. So the black razzle goes on the purple path and we're gonna go all the way up through that little telescoping thread holder then we're going to floss the purple path so it stays down in there in the tension discs. And now, normally, if we were using regular thread or even a little bit thinner thread than this, we would just drop that right down and do our air threading. And you would do that by engaging the air threader and then dropping it down and pressing on the foot control. But this is just, like I said, it's a little too heavy and a little too wide to do it that way. So we're gonna circumvent it. And how we circumvent the um, air threading is we go all the way over here to this piece right here, this little um, hole right in there. And then we're gonna feed our thicker thread right through there. And you can see it right there, just like that. Now we're going to take our attention over here, and we're going to go through this hole right here. This closest hole right here in this area. You've got the back one, that's gonna go to red your lower looper, but this is the um, cover stitch looper that we wanna thread. So we're going to carefully use our tweezers to feed that right through there. And sometimes you gotta give it a little bit of stuff to hold on to there. Perfect. So now I'm gonna take my little wire and my little wire has this red tip on the end and I'm going to feed this wire all the way through my area down there. You can see how I'm putting it through there and I'm shooting that tube with this and I use my tweezers to do this and I'm just going to shove my tweezers or use my tweezers to grip this wire and continue to push, push, push this wire through the machine. As I'm pushing this through, eventually, right here, we're going to see that little red tip of this wire come out. Do you see it? Right here? So now we can pull, and then I'm going to take my black razzle, put it 
pull it through my threader, then pull my wire through, and that allows me to thread my black razzle through here. Then I can trim it, and now I'm ready to thread my needle. Threading the upper thread is going to go through the yellow path, and we're going to just thread the thread through that telescopic tower and floss our yellow path here. And then we go across, go into the yellow groove, and then up here, there is a whole little section of yellow, green, blue that represents our cover stitching needle threading path. So we're gonna go all the way up there. Then we're gonna come down under this little chrome piece and each one of these little slots is labeled so we're going to go down through the right center groove then we go through the little slot above the needle and then another slot above the needle and we can use our needle threader now to thread the needle so there's a little arrow on the front of the needle and that represents that that's going to go to the top and then what i like to do is move my thread so it's perpendicular to my needle arrow on top just start above the eye of the needle slide my piece down then push it through the eye of the needle and grab it on the back All right, it's time to add some embellishment to this cute little block. Like I told you, the magic happens when we turn our block upside down. So we're actually gonna use the dark lines that I stitched when I stitch and flipped our, our crazy patches. The first one I wanna do is where we started our first seam. So I'm gonna start right here. You can see my chain stitch Cord is back there so now I'm just gonna line this up and I you can if you look really closely here you can see that I have that pre-stitched line centered right in that first little hump that first little hump is where our needle is right here so I am just gonna stitch from top to the bottom and before I stitch I do need to adjust my stitch length on my cover chain stitch stitch so we've done all of our threading so now it's safe to get started here so the yellow and purple see how they're illuminated those are our tension settings on our stitch we are at a tension of 3.3 and 1.4 1.4 is our rayon pearlized rayon cord and then yellow is our needle and I am going to be adjusting the stitch length. You can see here I already have, but if you wanna know how to adjust your stitch length, the default setting is three, and that's just gonna give you a little bit of a tighter stitch, but I just wanna do the maximum length because I want it to be a little bit more spaced out. So once I make that change, I'm gonna X out of here and I'm ready to stitch. All right, getting ready to sew, I wanna lower my presser foot getting it right in that sweet spot there where I can get my needle right on my stitched line. And then I'm just gonna encourage my little cording thread to go back there. And now I'm gonna stitch, keeping it right on that line. You can see here that my previous stitch line is kinda lined up here with that little bump on my presser foot. Okay, and I wanna stop because I don't have any more line here. So I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see a little bit about what's happening. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. Then I'm gonna pull my top thread and cut. Now I'm gonna pull this away. And now you can see, I wanna just show you something. I made a stitch already. I actually forgot to press the record button and I apologize for that, but I got you this time around. So now we've got these little long tails and we're gonna have to hide those and I bury my threads each time. So I stitch a decorative chain, then I bury my stitches, then I turn it under and just keep repeating that process until I'm finished. So I'm gonna take, I've got a darning needle here. 
this is nothing special it's just a darning needle and I'm gonna thread it I like that the darning needles have large eyes ladies and gentlemen because my tired old eyes can't see anything anymore and then I'm gonna poke this through to the back and we'll worry about what's going on back there in just a minute and now I'm gonna take both of my threads here I'm gonna thread those up I'm gonna feed these through to the back now it's time to turn it upside down and look and see what's happening here. And so there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can take your threads, I just unthreaded my needle, and you can do a little knot, oops, like this. There we go. And then trim. Or, if you would like, you can just do a little square knot here. Either way, we just wanna get this thread kind of tucked away and we don't want a bunch of ugly tails under here. So now I'm gonna cut. And now we're ready to go all the way around. And I'm gonna just repeat that technique until all these seams are covered. Well, hey, I just wanted to show you an alternative technique if you don't have a serger. Because, you know, you're going to comment and say, hey, Gail, what do I do? I don't have a Bernina L890 serger. Well, you know what? Not many of us do. So um, what are some options to do if you don't have that? And another thing I wanted to show you is that you can do crazy quilting without embroidery too. We have this super cute art gallery fabric that I just love with little sayings about nature and these little antlers. It really is so cute. So what I did is I went ahead and made a 12 um, inch crazy quilt block so that I can show you how to embellish with a decorative stitch on your sewing machine. Now we're going to keep it simple and I think this would look super awesome with just the one stitch. So what I'm using is stitch number 332 and it's a traditional feather stitch and I'm using it at 9 millimeters wide and 5.4 millimeters long. So here's the feather stitch. It's 1332 on most Berninas. There are some other machines that it's going to be a different number, but just look at this little shape. Mm -hmm. Everybody has this. So there's my 9 millimeter. There's my 5.4 millimeter. All right, so now I'm going to open my bobbin door on my Bernina 880 Plus. And don't worry, everybody out there with the 4, 5, and 7 series machine, I'm going to show you how to do it on those machines as well. So on uh, these bobbin cases, I, I want you to know I test my stuff before I do these videos. And what I did is I discovered that with this particular thread, this is the same thread I put in the serger for the, for the uh, chain stitch. But if you look down here, see that little nubbin right there? Well, not my fuzz, but my nubbin. Let's get that out of there. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, the... Um, little dots should normally line up. In fact, down here, there it is. On the machine, when you have an eight series, you'll, it'll put a little dot kind of where your, your little dot should be in relation to this one. So on this machine, normally the dot is a little just, oh, wait. So on this machine, normally the, um, this dot over here, the little silvery one, would be just a little breath to the right of the dot, but I have moved it all the way to the left because this particular thread requires that I put very little tension on the bobbin. So I'm just gonna close this now. There it goes, we can say bye-bye to that. And now here's my little tester. So I sort of like to test things with a contrasting thread in the top so I can see what I'm going to be dealing with. Well, this was my first go and you can see that that feather stitch looks a little bit distorted, but then I adjusted my upper tension and then suddenly my design got a little better looking. Or at least I was able to see that little feather stitch was more defined. So I just threaded black thread up above, 
adjusted my upper tension to five and now I feel confident to get started. If you watch the earlier portion of this video, you'll know that I started on the first pass, which was this one, and I wasn't happy with my seam allowance, so I took a bigger seam allowance when I got started here, so I have two. Um, but what I wanna do is lower my presser foot, and I have my little red crosshairs right there where I'm gonna start exactly on my piece. Now, what I can't do on a serger that I can do on this is I'm just gonna give, I'm gonna grab my thread here and I'm gonna put my needle right down in the starting point of my design. So put the needle down with the heel part of my foot control and I'm gonna bring the needle up. Now I'm gonna lift my foot slightly so I can pull that thread up. Maybe I need to go ahead and just lift it up permanently for a moment. So now I'm gonna just pull that thread. See it coming up there? I wanna just pull it up through so I can, you know, keep a hold on it a little bit. Now I'm gonna lower the presser foot again. And now I'm just gonna line my little red dot from this foot right along my blue stitching here. Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to heel tap my foot control. And now I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to pull a generous length of thread and cut on the side of my machine. And now what I really would like to do is give a little pull here to pull that bobbin thread up, but it's gonna be a little difficult. So what I'm gonna do is get a darning needle to show you how to tuck in your threads. So let's talk about this one first. All I have to do really is just tie a knot and then trim these up. So you saw me do that on the um, serger one, and that's all we're doing. Just kind of pull that and knot it, just like that give a little pull extra. Okay, perfect. But now on this one, I'm gonna have to thread this cord through. Okay, and then I'm gonna just slip that right through my fabric. and then pull it up, and then we can just tie this in a knot. And so each time you do a seam, you're just gonna wanna do that. Just one more for good measure, cause you know, I can't see with the stupid camera in my lap. All right, there we go. Let's have a look. So there's our little feather stitch. And it looks pretty gosh darn cute. And so now that's the technique that I would use for each little seam. I'm adjusting my bobbin tension and then moving forward. So now we're gonna hop on over to the 790 and the 790, we gotta use a little something special. All right, join me at the 790 where I am still using stitch number 1332, the feather stitch that you see here, and the same tension adjustment. But as an added bonus, have any of you ever used your ketchup bobbin case? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, that red bobbin case. Here it is. So I want to show you carefully how I've threaded the cord through here. Now this is a thick thread. So on thick threads, you don't wanna thread it like a normal bobbin case. See, this one doesn't even have a spring on here. So you actually take 
your bobbin, you go up through that empty hole and up through the silver pieces. Do you see that? So that's the correct threading for this Razzle thread. But I know what you're thinking. Gail, you gotta show me this. I can't figure this out. So in the bobbin case, you also get a little wire threader because it's kind of hard to poke that little dude up through there. So I'm gonna show you what I did. So I took my threader. There it is, can you see it, right? Thready part in, that's the little loop. The loop goes in first and the loop is going through those springs, both of them there at the top of the bobbin and then coming out the bobbin case, bobbin case. Then the bobbin goes in this direction. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut my hands there and hold it. And then I'm just gonna feed my thread through the threader loop. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna carefully put my bobbin case in lightly and pull my bobbin, my thread up through. There we go. Just make sure, there we go. Now it's spinning loosely and I can undo my threader and now I'm just gonna wind it back on my spool with these and my little darning needle, just so I don't waste this precious bobbin thread. All right, so then this goes back into the machine the same way that you've threaded all of your, your bobbins. There we go. And now I'm just gonna close the door. I'm not cutting it short, I'm just closing the door. I'm gonna put my slide on table back on the machine. There we go. And now I'm ready to stitch. So this was the feather that I did on the 880. And now I'm ready to do another feather right here. So just like I did the other one, I'm gonna hover over my piece here, but I wanna put my needle down and bring my needle up, bring my foot up so I can pull that bobbin thread up through my machine. There we go. And it's nice to have a tail because that makes it easier to tie it in a knot. And now I'm just going to quickly stitch. So there we go. And, then, and just like we did the serger demo, We're gonna stop when we get to, when we see that our stitching line has stopped. So got about two more stitches to go. There we go. And now I'm gonna raise my needle and pull my fabric from my machine by raising my presser foot and then pulling and cutting it and bringing it through with my darning needle. All right, so just like we ended up, ended off our stitches on the other bits, I'm gonna feed it through my darning needle. Bring it to the other side. And tie it off. Your side, your favorite method. and then just finish up the whole piece. But great alternative to using the serger. All right, kids, you got a lot of embellishing to do for next time, but there's a reward on the horizon. We said that this was an embroidered crazy quilt. So we're gonna do a little bit more embroidery next week. We're gonna learn how to do three-dimensional embroidery to add to our pieces after they're quilted. And then we're also gonna learn how to embroider some of the pieces after you've done all of your embellishing. So that's gonna be really fun and you're not gonna wanna miss that class. But in the meantime, if you wanna see more videos from us, subscribe to the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, 
comment, and subscribe to our channel, or click the little bell if you want to know the minute we upload a video just like this one. But in the meantime, hey, whip out that chain stitch machine or practice your bobbin work, and I'll see you next time.